Matters on KC24, your local election headquarters. Did he lie to you guys, too? Well, I can't get into it. A lot of things you can't get into. Robert Mueller's testimony on Capitol Hill was billed as a heavyweight showdown, but did it live up to the hype? Our panel is back for round two. Jim Veros, Diane Pierce, and Veva Islis. And so, Jim, I'll uh, start with you. When you look at the totality of we waited a week, right? It was postponed for a week. And at first, we never thought we'd hear from Robert Mueller. Now that we have, what's your initial thoughts of what we saw? It's interesting because when you take a look at the pundits on both the Republican and the Democratic side, they were both claiming victory. And after I took a look at uh, the testimony, watched it a couple times, uh, watched all the pundits again, I think they both lost on uh, mm -hmm. both sides because the Democrats did not get what they wanted, which was this earth-shattering bombshell that uh, they were waiting for. And the Republicans, once again, had to go on camera and defend a president that a lot of the Republicans don't want to defend going into their own elections. So I think it's going to be difficult moving forward to claim any sort of victory or any sort of substance from it that can be used moving forward. Veva, I'll come to you. You heard Congressman Devin Nunes talk about exoneration. Now, the president came out long before when the report first came out said I'm exonerated he mm. did say that and then obviously Robert Mueller says this does not exonerate the president Congressman Nunes says well don't you have to be charged with something don't you have to go through a court system and a judicial system in order to be exonerated from a charge what's your what's your takeaway as you're watching this you know, it's uh, really confusing for, mm -hmm. I think, the average um, American to get down to what's the truth, like what does this mean? Um, I think, you know, the only resolution here is that he admitted that this does not exonerate him. So he wrote the report, he's stating that. There was an investigation, so clearly there was something uh, happening that merited an investigation. I think the truth is that the Russians were in, involved, they did interfere in our election. You know, we have about 35 folks who've been charged um, as a result of uh, looking into this, and the truth is that this is the most corrupt and convicted administration in our history. Uh, Diane, I'll come to you because Robert Mueller even said that uh, as they were talking with the testimony, he said, are Russians going to hack into our next election? And Robert Mueller said, the Russians are, are hacking into our system right now as yeah. we speak. Um, that we know is true. Right. Um, one can argue either way, uh, did we learn anything more from his testimony? No, and I think that's kind of what Jim was saying, where there really weren't any winners. You can say there weren't any losers, however you want to look at it. But one comment on the exoneration part, and anybody who expected Mueller's report to offer a conclusion what, didn't know what the whole deal was. His report was never going to offer conclusions. It was meant to be a retelling or a report of the investigation itself. And exoneration would be a conclusion. So the people who are saying the report exonerated the president is, are taking their own conclusion from the merits of the report itself, which I think is a fair conclusion to make from it because again there's no charges there's there's no there's no there there you're a major player in the local republican scene here ah uh, i'm going to quote you oh yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. so uh, you know when you look at this as it played out i mean some say robert moeller uh, seemed a little off he mm -hmm. he didn't know really what was in his report others say he he's a prosecutor he he's a guy that's not going to go outside the box he's not going to make mm -hmm suspicion or speculation or anything like that. He did what he said he was going right. to do. So you're, you're part of the leading Republican Party here in the Valley. Can you honestly say and sit here that, you know, the impeachment talk should be ended after this? From my perspective, I can play either side of that because I think that rationally, impeachment talks need to end. But knowing how I believe they benefit President Trump and um, how 
disenchanted middle America and independents and that are with the games the Democrats are playing, I say go, 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 you know, keep having those impeachment resolutions brought and, you know, you we're still just going to You still say it's a distraction things. maybe to the... I think it, well, I think the truth be told, what impeachment does is say, do we still want this guy in office? And mm. I think that's going to happen in 2020 and the voters are going to be able to decide whether or not Donald Trump should keep his post and I think he will. Uh, Veva, you were taking some notes there, I'm mm -hmm. curious. You know, I think that there have been so many things that have happened that merit his impeachment. So much more than what has happened previously when we've had impeachment of our of our presidents. Um, it, it, you know, to me, it's it's not funny. It's uh, affecting uh, me personally, my family, uh, relatives that I have um, trying to cross the border. Um, you know, his attack now on people seeking asylum. Uh, it's just been one thing after another. And you know, racism is a system that unfairly discriminates against people and it unfairly advantages other people and all of the policies that he's been dismantling are further uh, affecting people in poverty and people of color um, so you know I'm, I'm really exhausted by his consistent attacks in our community and I, I really and, think he needs to go and one could argue uh, on the other side of things that maybe he's uh, cleaning up the immigration system but yet Congress hasn't passed any immigration reform um, Jim, speak to that maybe. And, and also, I could remember the time when you know, there was this impeachment process for Bill Clinton. I'm, I'm looking at, it's apples and oranges, mm -hmm. and I get that. But still, that fired up the Democratic yeah. Party, and he won in a landslide. Mm -hmm. Are we, could we see that? A, a couple different things. A word that they've ever used was exhausted. Mm -hmm. And I think that the voting base, usually in a, in a presidential campaign, is exhausted between the primary elections and the general election. Usually the, the, the wonderful political consultants and, and the national committees, it's their job to, to get that base rocking again. Yeah. Most of the voters are exhausted already. They're already yeah. tired of all this. And it's not yeah. even partisan. They're just tired of the constant mudslinging. And usually mudslinging sells. But right now, um, well, I, don't, some, I don't think it is. We need to get some rest because we have the second debate for the Democratic Party. I'm looking forward to that. And, yeah. and even with, but even with the, yeah, right. But even with the, getting back to what you were talking yeah. about with the, with the Democrats, um, the Republicans never had the votes in the Senate to, yeah. to kick out Clinton. Right. The de same thing now. The Democrats don't have the votes with Republicans to kick him out. So well, it's, it's kind of this. It's not apples and oranges. It's apples and old apples. Okay. <laughs> well, well, we'll punctuate it on that. But stick around for the first time. We're going to do a third panel. There's so much to talk about, including, yes, the DMV task force. Jim Patterson, it says it struck out. Does our panel agree? Next.